yeah, originally colleges were very nervous about homeschoolers because they didn't have any data. And so they were really concerned with homeschooling performance and whether they would fit into the classes and whether they could be academically successful and uh, whether they were worth the, the, um, the, the process you have to go through to get in. And they were also curious with them because they don't have the same come to the same process that a traditional school children will, and the fact that they don't have you know, verified transcripts and, and those kinds of things. Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, if, if not listen, that's changed dramatically. And the reason has been that there is now lots of data generated both inside and outside the homeschool community that has shown the tremendous success rate of homeschool students in institutions of higher education, and they also retain better than students generally. And so they've gone from being kind of a questionable group to cause you know what to do with, to being a very highly desirable group because they often are very high performers, they, they almost always graduate, and, and so now colleges by and large, for the most part, are not asking what do we do with them, but asking where do we get them. Most colleges have specific homeschool processes. They're, they're, they're used to dealing with homeschoolers. They have some sort of system. They'll often have web pages devoted to them. Some will have publications. And, and some of them may have a counselor that's actually assigned to us, uh, much as they would for any desired population. They're going to make sure that they make things as easy and clear as possible for the students. I think if the, if the movement continues to grow, then it'll just become more and more of an issue for, for um, colleges and universities that they're going to be paying attention to. Um, it is the, one of the fastest growing populations in education. Uh, it's still not a huge percentage of the population. And so as it becomes larger, it'll get even more and more attention. Uh, it will depend on several factors, some of which will be uh, what happens in the homeschool community. Things like co-ops and those kinds of things are changing the face of the homeschool community and in ways that, that remains to be seen whether it be negative or positive as far as, as the kind of success rates and the kind of ways of coming to college. The other thing will be whether they're talking about traditional colleges or distance learning colleges. Um, there's, there's a tremendous growth in non-traditional education systems and homeschoolers are, are very interested in those kinds of things and so those institutions in particular will be aggressively recruiting homeschoolers because they've been on the leading edge of using their services. Um, on the other hand, traditional schools are going to find that their pool of students are shrinking more and more. So to find students who are well qualified and retain well will become an even more of an issue and so they'll be spending more time looking at this. So, you know, if you ask to make, make a prediction, I think it's just going to get better. I do not know a specific study. Um, I have certainly reviewed information that has, set, has shown that homeschoolers do better than both public school students and private school students. And my own experience would say that that is also the case for my institution. That is certainly true, that, that homeschool students uh, retain better by far and have higher GPAs than either public or private school students. So certainly for my own institution, I've seen data for that nationally, although I can't quote the specific source of this point. And anecdotally, it would make sense to me that that would be the case. When, when, I, when I look at homeschoolers as a group, they, they have the highest retention rate and one of the highest, if not the highest, college GPA of any segment of my population that I look at in my institution, uh, whether that's divided by public school, private schools, activity groups, religious affiliations, geographic diversity, all, all of those kinds of things. Uh, no matter how I would move that, homeschoolers always have the highest retention rate and almost always have the highest GPA. If a student graduates from a, a private or public school, uh, that is what is considered on the transcript. Um, so a student that was homeschooled in elementary medical middle school will have no bearing on, on their application process in homeschool. I mean, excuse me, the application process in the college. Uh, instead, the, the secondary school that is considered. I think the most important thing for homeschool students that want to go to college to do is to prepare a good transcript. Um, colleges are going to need, absolutely need, to see a, a, some documentation of the studies that the student has completed. And so how you set that up can vary somewhat, but it should be as simple as possible to read but then provide the necessary detail for an admissions officer to understand the quality of that instruction. Um, along with that is extremely beneficial 
for a homeschooler to have some assigned GPA to those classes, even though that's not the norm for homeschoolers, but it will help them tremendously, both for admissions officers to review applications, but also when it comes to awarding academic scholarships. Um, and finally, I would say that any kind of outside verification of those things is extraordinarily helpful. And by outside verification, I'm talking about things like SATs, ACTs, and community college work of any kind. Um, there does not need to, to be a majority of that, uh, but anything that shows an outside verification of academic ability will be extraordinarily helpful for an admissions officer. If a homeschool student is applying and they're using online um, classes of some kind from an outside institution, the first thing an admissions officer is going to ask in all likelihood is, is this organization accredited? And in the homeschooling world, some of them will be and many of them perhaps will not be. And so what's important for a homeschooled parent to do is to go to that organization they're using and say, I'm going to be applying to college and they're going to ask, are you accredited? What shall I say? And, and find out how that organization deals with that. If they have some sort of accreditation the parent doesn't know about, if they have some sort of outcome data that they can they can provide for the parent, if they can have some sort of outside verification of their instruction level, um, the, any reputable company should have something in that nature, and the parents should know what that is before they apply to colleges, because that'll be one of the first questions that they're going to get asked, and they'll want to have that ready to be able to respond. There is an explosion of dual enrollment credits in the higher education world. Many high school students are coming in with loads of dual enrollment credits. And basically, that's what's happening when a homeschooler goes to a community college. They won't be called dual enrollment, they're actually college credits. So you will find that colleges are extremely used to dealing with that. And it will also be your benefit to talk to the institutions that you're interested in and find out what classes will transfer. Um, you don't want to take a, a whole slate of community college courses and find out only a third or two thirds of them will actually be general education equivalents. But almost every college will be more than happy to provide you with a detailed um, explanation of what classes would be the equivalencies of their general education so that when you arrive at the school, you don't have to take those classes. So if, if you know you have three or four schools that you're interested in, it's your advantage to talk to them prior to uh, taking, signing up for classes at the community college. I have not personally dealt with any unschooling students yet at my institution. Um, I would say that it is still going to be extremely important that some sort of documentation of instruction is provided, and that's going to be a big difference for unschoolers. Um, and I would say that you should be prepared for that to be met with a large degree of skepticism by admissions officers. Uh, and knowing that ahead of time, you will want to prepare to be able to articulate why your student is ready for college work. Keep in mind that an admissions officer, by and large, is looking for some sort of evidence that tells him or her that this student can be successful at the academic atmosphere of their college. And the way they do that is by some documentation of instruction received. Unschoolers won't be able to provide that, so, but they're going to absolutely have to articulate in some fashion why their student can be successful. And I think that it will probably be more difficult for them if they don't have a transcript. And it may well not be, well, may very well be impossible in some institutions. Uh, so they'll, they'll have to know that going in. How many times have you been on the road? All in front of you, moving like a toad. In the passing lane, taking a